And just my own journey to get hope, I'll just share my story because my story is my message. And I grew up north coast of California, redwood tree country. My father was a redwood tree timber faller. I did not know Jesus. As a boy, met Wendy when I was a senior in high school. She was a junior. Um, she, was, uh, she was not a Christian either. Uh, graduated high school, actually became a hippie, had hair. And we were seeking and searching and did things hippies did. Ha <laughs> ha. And tried to fill the vacuum in my heart. All kinds of stuff, but nothing lasted. And by the way, someone's watching this, whether it's online or whatever, who doesn't know Jesus, who's searching. And one of the prayers I prayed was, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. That's a good prayer. Someone's praying that out there. If you're real, show yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and that's my prayer. And, and we met Jesus. And uh, someone say, yay. yay. And, and we found out this. There's no high like the most high. Yep, no high like the most high. <laughs> and so we were, we were in an Assembly of God church, North Coast, California, near Eureka, and get saved and start going there. And um, my belief system at that time was if that I went to church and didn't feel saved, then I didn't believe I was saved. And if they gave the altar call to be saved again, I would go up and get saved again. Ha <laughs> ha. Then the Lord said, Steve, I've got good news for you. You are saved even when you don't feel saved. I go, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I thought feelings were the highest indicator of truth there was. Let's just laugh at that. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. You're righteous even if you don't feel righteous. You're powerful even if you don't feel powerful. You have a sound mind even if you don't feel like you have a sound mind. Uh-huh. Ooh, there, there's some, someone's going to go to the headwaters of that thing right there. Uh-huh. Even after hearing that, I would go to church not feeling saved, not believing I was saved. I'd want to go up there so bad for the altar call, and the Lord said, Steve, do not go up there. <laughs> don't go up there. But Lord, I know if I go up there, I'll feel better. I'll get this spirit of heaviness off me. So I'm going to show you how to get that heaviness off you. It's not by doing something different. It's by believing something different. My wife wrote a book called Victorious Emotions. And she very succinctly says, if you want a different emotion, you need a different belief. Ouch. But what a truth. What a truth. Most pessimism, most discouragement, most depression, most spirits of heaviness result from believing lies. So it was, we stayed in that church for 15 years. I was on staff for about 13 of those years. Um, and it was a season of living in Romans 12.1 where it says, to give your bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord, you know, which is your reasonable service. And basically what that Romans 12, 1 says is it's surrendering everything to the Lord. It's a sacrifice. Learning how to sacrifice your will. Not my will be done, but your will be done. It's learning how to do things God's way. I've never ever done anything God's way and said I wish I wouldn't have done it God's way. How many you know God's ways are perfect? Yeah. We at Wendy and I had to learn how to do our relationship God's way. Our relationship was built on sand, the world ways, and had to get purity under it, and how to, how to live that way. And I mean, I, and just surrendering and say, God, I want to do it your way, how to treat people, how, how, to, how to walk in integrity. Yeah. All of those things, learning, learning God's ways. And, and it was powerful and, and needed and and by the way, someone who's watching right now, the Lord is just releasing grace over you to do it God's way. 
And somebody, I mean, there, there was times where I had to pray the prayer, God, make me willing. <laughs> I had struggles. Ah, I don't know if I can do this. God, make me willing. I, I, I lay it down again. I lay what I want to do. I lay my self-will down. It's the season we heard what Isaiah heard in Isaiah 6. When Isaiah had an encounter. By the way, it started out, Isaiah 6, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Uzziah was king for 52 years. He died in a, in a time of national uncertainty. A prophet, a young prophet named Isaiah saw the Lord. It changed everything. All through the nation right now, in national uncertainty, there are people who are seeing the Lord high and lifted up. There's young prophets, there's old prophets, there's prophetesses seeing the Lord. And Isaiah saw the Lord, and we're still talking about him 2,700 years later. Somebody, and I dare to believe somebody is going to see the Lord, and someone's 2,700 years from now is going to be talking about somebody who saw the Lord in 2021. Mm -hmm. Someone say, I, I believe that. Yeah, I, I, man, yeah. yeah, Jesus may come back, before, but he may not. I don't know. I, I want to live in such a way I'm ready every day, but I'm living in such a way I'm going to have a 3,000, 4,000 year vision. Of influence. But he heard, who will go for us? <laughs> and he said, here am I, send me. Why don't you say that? Here am I, send me. Yeah. We say it again, Lord. We say it again. Yeah. What, 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 whatever you need. I, I don't have idea. None of us know where this thing's going. None of us know what we're being raised up for. That's one of the wonders of serving. I don't know. I, I just say, here am I sitting. I mean, David's out with his sheep in the field. He's got no idea where that thing's going. He's not thinking of Goliath. He's not thinking of sheep. He's just worshiping. I mean, he's thinking of sheep. He's not thinking about, yeah, thinking about excuse me, he's not thinking about being king. He's just out there worshiping and taking care of sheep and playing with slingshots. This thing's going bigger than you know. What God's raising you up for, it's bigger than you know. Just say, it's bigger than I know. And so that's what Wendy and I, we just said here, we just ran the altars, here we are, send us. And, and, and just, God doesn't need our ability, he just needs our availability. So after 15 years, in 1991, the Lord sent us out to pastor a church. We became senior pastors of a church in the middle of the Nevada desert in a place called Round Mountain, Nevada. Let's laugh at that, by the way. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Rural. I mean, this is rural. Uh, it's illogical to go out there, but how many of you know God's not always logical? How many of you know that in our faith journey, we're going to do things that aren't financially logical? that aren't logical to, to climb ladders of success. <laughs> and, and, and so we stayed out there 10 years. Now, we're in the middle of the desert, four hours from Reno, four hours from Vegas. And how many know God likes to send people to deserts to teach them how to repent? <laughs> yep. Now, one of the best definitions of repentance is to change the way you think. And we didn't know, but God says, I'm going to change the way you think out here in the desert. And when I say the Lord said to us, here's what I mean. We didn't hear an audible voice. These are conclusions that we made based on prayer, meditation, scripture, still small voice, these are the conclusions in our dialogue with, with, with God. And, 
And we, we basically heard, Stephen, Wendy, I love your heart for Romans 12, 1, to sacrifice and surrender, but if you're going to see transformation, I need to move you into Romans 12, 2. <laughs> Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and excellent and perfect will of God. So transformation doesn't come from surrendering your heart. It comes from surrendering your beliefs. We, we were under the mindset that the reason we weren't seeing breakthrough and transformation is because we hadn't surrendered our heart enough or hadn't sacrificed enough. Thinking there's got to be one more thing. We've got to surrender one more sin, one more, you know, sacrifice more money, more food, more dreams. Then we'll have breakthrough. And Wendy's in that mindset. God, I give you my heart. She's in prayer and, and she tells her, I guess I can't even give you my heart. Just take my heart. And she hears this, Wendy, I have your heart. Now I need your mind. <laughs> Whew. I need your mind. And we found this out. Surrendering our beliefs is more challenging often than surrendering our heart. The Lord asked Wendy, can you surrender the beliefs that you're shy? Inadequate and can't speak well in front of others. Can you surrender those beliefs? <clears throat> And she says, but that's who I am. Ha <laughs> ha. And she hears this. That's not who you are. It's just who you've become. That's not who you are. The only reason, because what we, what we realized is that we renewed our minds more with our past experience and our feelings than what he was saying. Because mind renewal on one level is just whatever you come into agreement with. I agree I'm not powerful. I agree I'm shy. I agree I don't have the gift of healing. And, and, and what happens is that we, because current mind renewal creates future experience. Whatever I renew my mind with today will transform my tomorrow. He, he asked me, Steve, can you, can you surrender the beliefs that you're less than other leaders and can you surrender the belief that there's something uniquely wrong with you? Let's laugh at that lie, by the way. Ha ha. Ha ha. Can you say, well, Lord, it feels so true. There's something uniquely wrong with me. If it feels this true, does it mean it is true? He said, no. Feelings don't validate truth. They just validate what you believe to be true. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, I think this message is just for you. So, man, we're getting rocked out there. Man, we're just, man, we're out, we're out here to change the world. The Lord says, I'm, I'm going to change you. I'm going to change you. That's what I'm going to do. 